Hello doctors, welcome. So this is the second video part of our air rotor series. In this video part, we will discuss about the regular maintenance and cleaning of our dental handpiece. Doctors, by doing so, I can guarantee you can definitely increase the life and the performance of your dental handpiece. Dental handpiece or air rotors are one of the most important equipment of any dental clinic. If you look at it, dental handpiece is the only instrument that brings us most of the earning in our dental clinic. And because of that, we have already discussed some important points regarding how to select a dental handpiece, what type and how many dental handpieces should be present in a dental clinic in our first video part. So if you have not gone through that video, my suggestion to you would be after watching this video, you must have a look at that video. It will definitely increase your knowledge regarding dental hand pieces. Meanwhile, let us continue with this video part. We all are aware about oiling of dental hand piece and this is generally considered as maintenance of dental hand piece. But believe me doctors, this is not enough and there are so many misconceptions and wrong steps done in oiling of a dental hand piece also. Like always, we are going to clear out every myth and we are going to discuss in detail A to Z regarding regular maintenance and also cleaning of a dental handpiece. So once again, hello doctors, I am Dr. Tarun Mawadia from Aksar Dental Academy. Let's begin. So doctors, when it comes to maintenance and cleaning of my dental handpiece, I would like to perform it in two manners. Number one is the regular oiling of my dental handpiece and cleaning daily after use before autoclaving them. And number second type of maintenance or cleaning is at a regular interval of one or two months depending on my use and that is going to be a deep cleaning where I would like to clean the cartridge and also the water outlet points of my dental air rotor. And by doing so, I have and everybody can increase the life and the performance of their dental handpiece. Doctors, as you all know, the design and the shape and the build of almost every dental handpiece are almost similar. So we are going to take an example of one handpiece over here and you can relate it to your own dental handpiece and you can perform the same. So doctors, the first part is the regular maintenance or oiling of my dental handpiece. And I would recommend every dentist to do this step daily at the end of their clinic hours before autoclaving their dental handpiece. Doctors, generally the oiling part is done by our dental assistant. So I would like all the dentists to understand the steps properly and then convey them and show them properly to their dental assistant. I would also recommend you to observe the steps done by your dental assistant for few days. So now as we all perform oiling of our dental handpieces, we must understand the performance or the use of oil for oiling our handpiece. So generally what we think is by oiling our handpiece, we are just trying to lubricate our cartridge and it will function better. But there are additional uses of this oiling also. So some of the uses are Number one is definitely the most common use and that is the oil is going to lubricate our cartridge and it can rotate freely. But in order to do this, our oil has to reach our cartridge area. Okay, so we generally like to blow oil from one end. Okay, and and that's all. But this is a wrong method to be done. So ideally, you must try to spray your oil in such a manner that it should reach to your cartridge, your cartridge should rotate at least five to six rotation and some of the other oil particles should come out of the head of the air rotor and that is when your complete oiling of cartridge is done. Now doctors, whenever we use our air rotors, there is going to be air and water inside and as you all know, oil and water do not mix. So if you don't dry your air rotor properly, then your oil is not going to reach over there. So the first and very important point to be understood is that oil should reach your cartridge and it should rotate your cartridge two to three rotations minimum. Then you can consider oil has reached up to your cartridge and few drops should come out of the cartridge end. The next important point to be understood is your cartridge nozzles or your water or air nozzles have to be dry. Definitely there is not going to be any water going inside your air nozzles but still I would suggest you to air dry them properly and then only spray your oil. 
Number third is we are generally recommended and we generally perform oiling through the air uh, nozzle of our handpiece. But there is an additional suggestion from my part and this is more recommended for the handpieces that are spare. So we generally use one or two hand pieces daily, okay. But for some spare hand piece, I would suggest you to oil them in their water inlet also, so that oil is present in those inlets. Then it will not allow the inlet part to get rusted, and any of the debris will not form a calculus over there, or you can call as a scale over there, okay. So by doing so, it can keep your water outlet nozzles clean. Otherwise, most of the common errors that come with our dental hand pieces are cartridge not working properly. And the second most common problem is water outlet stops or get blocked. And this is one of the reason. So my suggestion to you would be for your regularly and daily use air rotor, you must oil it through your air nozzle. For your hand pieces, we are which you are going to keep in spare and use them very occasionally or in case of emergency before storing them please oil them in their water nozzles also and additional to this every week i would like to oil the water nozzle also of my air rotor just to keep it away from rusting or so this step is not compulsory for you and for some of the people it might not be uh, easy to understand but believe me i have been doing the same since more than a decade and i have not faced any issues altogether Okay, there are some detailed steps on how to do that and I'm going to show you complete detail video on how to completely perform oiling but this is one of the important point to be understood. Okay, so now let us have a look at the video on each and every steps how to perform the oiling and this will clear out majority of your doubts. Okay, so doctors as you all can see on your screen we are going to first disinfect our air rotor with a normal sterilium and then I would like to clean it with a tissue paper. Okay. Uh, this can be done barehanded by your dental assistant also, okay, or you can perform it after your last dental treatment performed, okay. After this, the first and very important step is to dry out our air rotor of any debris and water. So I would like to blow air first and foremost from the burr end or the water nozzle end and also I would like to blow air for the push button type onto the cartridge cover also. Then I would like to come to my air rotors other end and there I would like to blow air in both the nozzles. I hope you are aware that the bigger nozzle is always for the air and the smaller size nozzle is always for the water. Okay, so I would like to blow air in the air nozzle also and this as you can hear out will create a sound and your cartridge should move so that any water inside the cartridge area as you can see over here the head there is water coming out of cartridge area it will dry up okay so please perform this once and twice and once you are thorough that all the nozzle ends and and the head of the air rotors are completely air dry then i would like to take any interdental proxa brush and i would like to clean the burr end as you can see the bristles are picking up something these are all the debris which rise when we do cutting and drilling of our tooth now we all are familiar with this type of lubricant spray which are available this is the one which i have been using right now okay and all this lubricating spray will have one bigger nozzle on top and some of them will provide a smaller nozzle also so as we are aware we are just going to suppose to oil the bigger end then this bigger end can easily go into your uh, air nozzle spray okay but i would like to uh, be very sure of the pressure going inside so i always connect this smaller end by doing so as we are aware about the principles of physics with smaller space the pressure increases so i would like to take this and then i would like to attach it tightly to my air nozzle of my air water and then I would like to blow up my uh, spray so that it can reach oil can reach up to my cartridge end. yes very important point is to shake well your can and please do shake it horizontally not vertically and then try to spray it okay ideally uh, you have to keep a tissue paper in front and then spray as you can see little bit of droplets came out of the end in, in at the bottom most cover but ideal step is like this you are going to suppose to cover it with a tissue paper your end and then shake well your uh, uh, oil can and then you must uh, pressure it at least for three seconds one two and three i would like to do it twice two seconds once and and one second later on and as you can see the oil came out of my cartridge area and this ensures that oil has reached in my cartridge area
and for some occasional time or weekly i would like to also oil my water inlet uh, of of my air rotor okay so that it can avoid rusting and uh, other things and and it can increase the or it can keep the nozzle patent now the next step comes comes out to be uh, oiling the air rotor head or the burr end and also oiling the push button switch in case of chuck type you can also oil over there but once you oil this head you must try to press the chuck or the push button two to three times many a times we face this issue our push button becomes very tight and that is because lot of debris get accumulated inside in the further video i'll show you how many debris can be present inside when i when i show you a opening of the cartridge and maintenance of it okay doctors so once this oiling is done i would suggest you to keep your air rotor uh, standing upside like you can see in the video uh, for for few minutes all together and then you can pack it and seal it for your autoclaving so doctors this were some of the steps for regular oiling of your dental handpiece now please make sure that you are drying your air rotor properly before oiling just taking a handpiece and blowing out air is not enough please try to understand the principle behind it and the function of oil under it okay so you need to blow air from the air rotor working end or burr end and when you blow air from that part any of the debris inside the cartridge area or most importantly at the water outlet area the algae or the scale which are getting stuck over there will get pushed back from the inlet part which is a wider area and once you have blown air from the burr and then only again try to dry it from the inlet part of air and water by repeating these steps once or twice this will ensure that any large particle or any removable by type of debris or algae or scale is present will get cleared out and this will prevent blockage of our water outlet and sometimes this type of particles can enter inside our cartridge area and it can damage or block our cartridges okay so please make sure that don't just try to blow air inside first and foremost please air dry it once it is dried properly when you spray your oil it will reach to your cartridge area and as we have looked earlier your oil should reach the cartridge area and the pressure should push the cartridge 3 to 4 rotations and this will ensure your proper oiling so doctors after this regular oiling of your air rotor now let us come to the second part and that is the monthly or quarterly maintenance of your air rotor and this can be considered as a deep cleaning type of a thing okay where we would like to thoroughly and completely clean our dental handpiece and the most important part which get damage in a dental handpiece is our cartridge and the second part is the water outlet which gets blocked so we are going to pay proper attention to them and we are going to clean and patent them properly so that they function for longer period of time so doctors in order to deep clean your cartridge and air rotor first and foremost i would suggest you to connect any type of burr to your dental handpiece okay once the burr is properly connected now every dental handpiece when you buy them you generally get some or the other chuck or a removal piece etc like this which will help you to open up the cover of your cartridge so using it anti clockwise okay please open carefully open your cover of your cartridge area okay and uh, here you can see in the video my hand my gloves are little bit oily so it is taking few more seconds otherwise it is an easier job uh, now for the people who are play paying close attention there is some thread like structure visible to you in the cover area and this might create a doubt what is that so many a times we face an issue that our air rotor is leaking air or water from the top of the cover so this is one of my small hack or a jugaad where you can take a suture thread and just put one small piece over there and tighten your cover it will block your air leaking out from it and also block any water if by chance coming out from it okay coming back to our main discussion the purpose of connecting the burr was so that we can carefully push it and remove our cartridge completely don't try to drop your cartridge onto the uh, floor directly or don't try to push it just by these cartridges are very leveled machine or equipments even if you dent it on one area this can damage the balance of a cartridge and we will not want that 
so after your cartridge is out i would suggest you to inspect it properly if you taken close attention on my second finger there was a black dot visible and that was a small particle that came out from it okay so this is how deep cleaning and cartridge can help us now carefully push or press your cartridge onto the cap area and remove your burr i would suggest you to clean your cartridge with a clean tissue paper and then again freely oil it open oil it that is so that oil can completely reach the area okay and after that i would suggest you to now clean the burr area using a proxa brush as you can see on your screen and in our regular or daily maintenance we were cleaning the burr area but the opposite end is not possible to clean so here we would like to clean both the uh, burr openings area properly with our proxa brush please make sure that your proxa brush is tightly and snugly fitting inside then only it will be able to clean properly okay you can inspect your cartridge whether it is whether it is moving freely or not if not then you can change your cartridge altogether and that is a discussion uh, for next time altogether we will discuss on how to change your cartridge altogether but this video partially covers that also you now need to just take your new cartridge and then you can place it inside and this is also one of our recommendation in our first video part that whenever you buy a hand piece select a hand piece which has an extra cartridge available and i would recommend you to buy one or two cartridge at that point of time only okay coming back to our video part now i would like to clean my cartridge hole or cartridge space you can do this by using an earbud or by using a tissue paper with a tweezer because my air rotors are maintained oiled regularly and cleaned regularly there is nothing much uh, to be observed over here but i am going to show you at the end one of the another video where you will be able to see how many uh, uh, debris are present in an air rotor okay so now after cleaning the cartridge area now i would like to make my air rotor uh, water nozzles patent and you as you can see i am using one of my used six number k file and i would like to pre curve it and i would like to just uh, press them as much deep inside as possible and i would just like to uh, rotate them and move them okay make sure that you are not breaking your file inside otherwise it might permanently block the things area but just a gentle wiggle over that is more than enough okay uh, and then this is done for some air rotors who have water outlet at the neck area you can do the same now once i have done filing make sure to blow air so that any debris which has loosen up from the area gets pushed down so whenever you push your air put your air rotor vertical and then push the air okay so once all these things are done now it is time to assemble our air rotor back as you can see every cartridge will have a small slot and the and there will be a small slot inside the air rotor space also so they should align properly and this will help you to put your cartridge in perfect space and and uh, no errors can be created and without that you will not be able to place your cartridge properly so you have to align them once your cartridge has seated properly now try to cover up the head altogether in in this case i have a small thread inside so i will like to press it properly inside and tight it uh, make sure that you are tightening it properly so please ensure that you are uh, extra tightening it so that none of the air can leak from the head area and we can get a constant good pressure from our head or from our hand pull hand piece okay so i will like to tighten it properly as you can see on your screen okay and now you can again uh, put back your burr inside and inspect if you want okay i am just trying to show you that otherwise it's not necessary i would now like to put my air rotor for autoclaving whenever i do my my air rotors get autoclaved daily okay i have around 6 to 7 air rotors at a time i would like to use new air rotor in every patient all together okay and then i would like to keep them for autoclaving okay so doctors i hope this gives you little bit of more insight on how to accurately oil your dental hand piece and also how to open up your hand piece and clean up your cartridge properly now i would like to show you video of one of my friends dental hand piece okay which is not regularly maintained actually and let us open it up and see what all things are present inside so doctors as you can see on your screen there is a black type of tartar liquid coming out when the air rotor is oiled this is a sign that there is a lot of debris inside so once i opened up the cartridge cover you can see this black tartarish type of uh, debris present 
I am sure that everybody is shocked to look at this, but please remember this can be your air rotor also. Okay, so uh, you carefully clean it and after removing the cartridge, as you can see the cartridge is not functioning properly because all these debris etc have entered inside the cartridge area and it is blocking our cartridge okay so now the remaining steps where i try to disinfect the cartridge and i try to put the cartridge into sterilium solution and i will hope that the debris get loosened up and then i try to clean it with brush and etc okay so that is going to be another topic of discussion later on but this is just what i am trying to show you that if you don't open up the cartridge and well maintain it then such type of debris can damage your cartridge and it will unnecessarily lead to more expenses to you okay so the conclusion of the story is please oil your air rotors daily but do them clearly and efficiently ideally there are two steps required in oiling first and foremost you have to clean your air rotor so there should be an alcohol spray present and you must clean it with that and that alcohol spray will remove any debris which is stuck to the air rotor and then you are supposed to oil it but not going into that much peculiarities altogether just blow dry your air rotors okay and once they are dry please oil them but important point is oil them for minimum three seconds and see to it that oil is coming out and and pressure is coming out from the other end cover the end with your um, tissue paper etc don't try to blow air uh, or blow oil everywhere okay once that is done then please 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 sterilize and autoclave your ore rotor before every use or at least once at night i understand that not every dentist can afford to keep five to six air rotors and not they can use new air rotor in every treatment but at least cold sterilize them which i think everybody will be doing before use but make sure to autoclave them at least once okay and after that now the remaining points are clearer to you and also from now i would suggest you all to at least once a month or depending on your use please open up the cap of your air rotor and you need to do it please understand the companies also want you to clean the cartridge and that is the reason they are providing you extra clutch or extra pliers to open up the cartridge cover okay so please try to understand their hint and do clean your cartridges and uh, file your water outlet area and this will definitely improve the life and performance of your air rotor so doctors i hope this was a helpful one for all of you okay that's all from me on this topic see you all in yet another interesting video until then stay tuned to the channel thank you so doctors as promised earlier there is something new coming on our channel and i am really very excited about it and i am very sure it will help out the future uh, dentist planning for their own dental clinic i would not like to disclose much once let let me first finalize all the things up and then i'll share up the complete plan with all of you and it will really uh, help out many of you and i would like you all to understand the process under it okay so stay tuned to the channel and see you all very soon thank you so for some of our new watchers we have a dedicated whatsapp group particularly related to dentistry and this is a one of a kind group and this is mainly to help out the new dentist who are about to start their private practice journey or who are planning to set up their dental clinic or who already have their dental clinic and have come across so many practical issues which they never realized could have occurred okay so if you are if you are any of this type of dentist you must join this group this group is dedicated only to questions and answer no question is a small question and no question is a stupid question over here feel free to ask any type of question going through your mind and we will try our level best to bring a perfect solution for you this is one of the most happening group right now okay and we are almost around six to seven hundred members now and this is benefiting a lot of dentists in their daily dental practice so if you have no space or no place or no one to ask your common small questions we are here for you be a part of the group and feel free to ask as many questions as you have and i can assure you you will get accurate and perfect answers which are tried and tested and which will be also economical for you and it will give you good results okay so if it is necessary for you 
do join the group and it will definitely benefit out of you if you know anyone who is going through such a phase and needs some guidance etc regarding practical things about managing a dental clinic about materials about uh, how, about how to tackle with a patient about a treatment plan anything related to dentistry we are here for you okay so make sure that you be a part of the group okay there are some rules and regulation for the groups okay uh, please do follow them okay we we don't want any politics any news any any of the other uh, memes related to dentistry or anything else this is pure question and answer based group and we would like to keep it and also every member is also interested in keeping the group the same okay so do check it out details of the group are in the description box okay and also furthermore some of the links etc are provided over there have a look at them if you find them beneficial we'll be very happy for you okay thank you